At the time of this video, TopoDroid is probably the best all-around digital cave survey application. It is a free and ad-free application for use on the Android operating system. Version 4.0 of the open source software has just been released in the summer of 2018. This application is designed for capturing cave survey data and sketches while underground and can be used to calibrate a Disto X. It's possible to use the application with analog survey instruments by manually entering data, but it's much more powerful when used in conjunction with the Disto X to automatically import and archive cave survey data. After downloading and installing the application from the Google Play Store, you can tap on the icon to enter the main menu. You'll see a list of existing surveys, a menu button, and a series of function buttons. The options are to continue working on a previously started survey, to start a new survey, to import a saved or transferred survey, or to make adjustments to the drawing tools. The final option is to make adjustments to the Disto X. The focus of this video tutorial will be on the use of the Disto X device functions, including Bluetooth settings, upgrading the firmware of the Disto X, and calibration. Before getting into the details, you should know that by going into Settings in the main screen menu, you can change the level of features to make the software as simple or complex as you like. Scanning and pairing using Bluetooth and Disto X calibration are functions that are available in normal, advanced, and expert modes. However, if you want to upgrade the firmware of the Disto X, you must choose Expert Mode. If you're just learning to use the software, then I'd recommend using Normal Mode, which has all of the basic and commonly needed features. But as you get more familiar with the software and you want to expand its capabilities, then you can try Advanced or Expert Modes to enable more functions. For the purposes of this tutorial, I am in Expert Mode, and you may see more buttons or menu options than would be displayed if working in a lower level. From the main menu, by tapping the Disto X icon, you can open the Disto X Devices menu. If you've already paired a Disto X with your Android device, then a list of devices will be shown. To pair a new Disto X, use the Options menu. Ensure the Disto X is turned on and the Bluetooth icon is shown, then select Scan from the Options menu. A list of available Disto X devices will appear on the bottom of the screen within about 15 to 20 seconds. If Auto Pairing is enabled in the Settings menu, then a window should pop up with pairing code instructions. Some Disto X units will generate their own code, which you can accept, while others will ask for a code, and the default is four zeros. If auto pairing isn't enabled, then open the Options menu and tap Pair. You can pair your Android device with multiple Disto X units, but it can only communicate with one at a time. Once paired, you can select the correct instrument from the list. If you tap and hold on a Disto X device, you can give it a custom name, which is useful if you're paired with multiple instruments. There may be as many as six buttons available. The three buttons on the right aren't available when in normal mode, but these aren't very often needed. The button on the far right is for dumping raw data from memory to an external file. The button next to it is for downloading and viewing the calibration coefficients from the Disto X, and the button to the left of that is for reading the serial number, firmware version, and hardware version off of the device. If you're ever unsure of the function of each button, you can go to the Options menu and select Help, which will explain what each button does. The far left-hand button is for resetting the Bluetooth connection. In some menus, the Bluetooth button will allow you to turn the laser on and off and take a measurement without the use of the keypad. The second button from the left is used to put the Disto X in or take it out of calibration mode. And the third button from the left, with the gear icon, is the main calibration function. Selecting the calibration function will open a window that will show a list of old calibrations for the currently active device, as well as buttons for importing and starting a new calibration. You need to name the calibration file that will be generated, and you can choose whether to use a linear or nonlinear regression of the data, or allow the software to decide. The nonlinear algorithm adds three additional coefficients to the standard 24, and helps reduce the overall error for some models of Disto X. I generally just select Auto, which is the default. Once this is done, tap the check mark button to save, then tap the folder button to enter the main calibration menu. Before beginning a calibration, the memory on the Disto X should be cleared. Then press the calibration toggle button, which should display Cal000 on the Disto X. At this point, you will go ahead and collect the standard 56 calibration readings. For details on how to do this, please see my other tutorial that covers the details of Disto X calibration in a cave. I'll put a link to that video in the notes below and I do strongly recommend collecting these readings in a cave. 
With the 56 calibration readings stored in memory, tap the Data Download button to transfer the measurements to TopoDroid. With the data downloaded, press the Group Number Assignment button to have the software automatically detect groups of four measurements that are associated with the readings taken with the DistoX rotated onto each of its four sides. There should be a total of 14 groups. You can tap on any individual measurement to modify it, change its group assignment, or delete it. You can manually change the group number to zero if you don't want it to be used to calculate the calibration coefficients. If you see any measurements highlighted in red, this indicates that there was some sort of magnetic interference and the measurement should be repeated or possibly deleted. Deleted measurements don't actually disappear, but they aren't used in calculating the calibration coefficients. By going to the Options menu and selecting Display, you can show deleted measurements, which will be highlighted, and tapping on them allows you to undelete them. Next, tap the gear icon to calculate the calibration coefficients. Towards the bottom is the average error, which is the average error of the measurements within each group relative to the group mean, and should be below a value of 0.5. If the average error is too high, then the calibration may need to be repeated. You can also scroll through the individual measurements and see the error for each one. There may be only a few bad measurements that can be deleted or remeasured to improve the overall error. Once an acceptable calibration has been achieved, tap the Upload button near the bottom of the Calibration Coefficients window to send the new calibration coefficients to the DistoX. TopoDroid also has a button with an ellipse that shows two spheres that are representations of the quality of the distribution of the 56 calibration measurements. The numeric value should be close to 100, and the spheres should be mostly green. If there are red areas, this would indicate a gap in the distribution of measurements. You can also use TopoDroid to update the firmware of the DistoX. Be aware that doing this will erase any readings in memory, erase the current calibration, and put the DistoX back into default settings. From the DistoX Devices menu, with TopoDroid in Expert Mode, go to the Options menu and select Firmware. Select Upload, then tap on the line for Firmware File. The latest version of TopoDroid comes with the .bin firmware files. The latest firmware version, 2.5, will recognize the various combinations of DistoX hardware and therefore should work with any device. Before selecting the OK button, you'll need to put the paired DistoX into upgrade mode. This is accomplished on the DistoX by simultaneously pressing the plus, minus, and on buttons from a powered off state. The LCD screen should illuminate, but will be blank. Then you can go back to TopoDroid and select OK, and OK again to confirm. Carefully read the warnings and follow the instructions exactly. A failed firmware upgrade can put your DistoX into an unusable state that may be difficult to fix. A window will pop up showing that the firmware file has been successfully written to the device. You can then press the OFF button on the DistoX to turn it off. When you turn the DistoX back on, it will display NO CAL. At this point, you can use TopoDroid to start a new calibration, or you can re-upload a recent calibration. You may also want to restore other settings, such as the preferred measurements units. For more information on TopoDroid, look for a companion tutorial I'm working on that will focus on survey data collection and sketching.